Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another fantastic episode of Astral Stew. Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, really. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus. Um, uh, no, no but Santosh is... and I were on a hiatus. You were on a hyenas. Yeah. yeah, we were all on hiatus. Yeah, not a low hiatus. Not by my choice, but yeah, we were. Yeah, we were. We were figuring stuff out, which is okay. Anyways, um, talking about AI, that's what we wanted to talk about t today. Not just the use of AI, right? But uh, what does it mean from an ethics perspective if you use AI to make art or to write your paper or to write a children's book or whatever the case may be? So I'll just kick it off with that, pose that question. What do you all think? You know, as uh, two artists on the show, what do you all think from a AI perspective? Is it just a tool to be used or does it infringe on true artistic style? Well, part of the, 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 the part in terms of like art, art, not performing arts, but regular art is that the, the, a lot of the art AI is stealing art. That, that's where the issue is, is where I think some of that is. Because if it's just creating art, who, who gives a shit? It's, to me, it's another, it's another performer, right? Or I mean, another artist. But it's stealing art from artists and using it to create art. And that's where, it's, that's where to me, it's crossing a line in, in that regard. But is it, if it's using art that another artist has created as a starting point for the creation of new art, How's that different from almost every other art that's already out there? Like if I am inspired by a picture that Picasso makes and I use that as an like a, a basis for a picture that I make, even though it maybe is like 20% Picasso and the rest of it's me, isn't that the same thing? It's the fine line of perjury or not perjury. Um, the thing you copy and claim it. I know. Um, plagiarism. 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 Yes. Yeah. Thanks for the help, guys. Yeah. yeah. Plagiarism. Yeah. Um, you know, and that that is a fine line that I think is constantly getting redrawn because as an artist, you you like something of someone else's, you can homage it or, I mean, yeah, straight up copy it. But but it's but if but once you're claiming that the copy is your thing. That that for me is where the right. issue is. I, yeah. Like, is when you're claiming how how this is mine. No, this was heavily influenced by this, and then that way you're you know, yeah. I, or at least I that's the way I try to <laughs> try to get around it. I mean, well, I found like, myself looking ahead. for rep, uh, looking for references online. Yeah, and it was yeah. one, a big thing for me was like I had to also think a photo is still art. I was just like, oh, there's a photograph of it somewhere. I can just, even though I've take artistic photographs, that one took a while to sink in for me. Mm -hmm. It was like you don't you don't just steal what's on a picture either, because that is someone's art. You can use that to inform yourself, and there are only like so many iterations you can draw of the human body in different positions right. before you're bound to start copying again. But I, for me, mm -hmm. it's still claiming it as 100 percent your own. Yeah, you it's the same thing. Like as a writer, you know, I mean, what Joseph Campbell says: there's only three stories ever written you know so aren't they all just copies of those three stories or different iterations if you will yeah i um, thought it was 10 10 but yes but <laughs> was that i remember three it's been a so, long time so do you think then that the from, let's let's look at maybe specifically ai art because that's where we started out in the conversation and say is the artist the ai or the person who writes the prompt that the AI uses to create the art because maybe AI prompting will become its own art form in how you prompt AI to create what you have in your head that you can't yourself create in art think, but AI can do it for you think about it like music though um, that oh brain come back you just had a good thought it was comparing it to 
to music oh like looping like taking some people's loops and right. adding it in that yeah. is like standard now so are you then saying that like that's like saying they're not really making art because they didn't do it all from scratch right which is a whole nother like you right. know kit and caboodle of of the originality all the way through yeah so you're like like looping and sampling and stuff yeah I, and, I, and i i am guilty of saying uh they're using they're sampling something they knew was a hit to make a hit but like a lot of the songs from the 90s right you know they mm -hmm. they took they took a lot of tracks from the 70s right in the disco era and the funk era and they repurposed them for a lot of like p diddy and all those guys that you know in use those sounds in the 90s they were new tracks right they were you know in a lot of in, in some ways they did change a little bit of the way that the audio flowed but it's still you know they they, they bought rights right to use i assume they bought rights they bought rights oh, to, that was the thing about sampling uh because if you only use seven seconds of a song you don't have to buy it you don't have to pay for the rights of it well in, in the case of like this song that is uh, based off a of juicy fruit, they used a lot more than seven seconds. Oh, I know, but I, I and I don't know if it's seven seconds, but there's a certain thing because they went yeah. to court about it, and it's, it's only that's why it's sampling. There's you're sampling a piece of that music. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know, in the case of like even on YouTube, right? You're allowed to put certain clips within a certain mm -hmm. time frame on your YouTube video and it's not considered copyright material. Like right, right now, I could throw in a clip of some famous movie and it's not copyrighted because it's less than whatever the second count is. And I think it is somewhere around six or seven seconds. But um, I, I guess, you know, to kind of get back onto the topic around AI art, um, I, I think that if you go into an AR art, art producer like Mid Journey or, or Dolly or something like that, and you and the only prompt you give it is art, uh, and it produces whatever it produces based off of that. Um, I would consider the creator in that case to be 100% the AI, and the person who downloads the image is more or less an, uh, an art broker. In the case where you provide a long string of text with descriptive information, uh, de defining the type of painting, what you want to see in it, the, the angles, the lines, the colors, the whole kit and caboodle, and then it produces what you're asking for, you are the artist at that point because you you took what you had in your head and, you, and AI just put it together for you. And you maybe even tweet like, I like this one or give me another four examples of with this particular one. See, you built on it. You are the artist at that point. AI is the tool that you use to create your art. That's, that's just my, it, it, for me, it's the same way with those artists who have the robot arms that paint on canvas, right? You programmed in some series of movements that that robot arm then took that paintbrush and painted on canvas, and then you sold that thing for a thousand dollars. Did you paint it, or did the robot paint it? It's the same type of conversation, in my opinion. Yeah. How much do you feel your tools are part of the process? I'm again taking it to a music thing. Um, you have almost a symbiotic love relationship with your instrument right and bring it out out and then deify it some people you know like i wrote my best songs on that guitar right da, 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 da. they're and including it i think for me it's, it all sweeps back around to is it is it taking from someone's mouth just to put it in your own like i think that that's where i think the prompting piece comes into play right if if you if you go to fiverr and you buy AI prompts, and then you put those into the AI art. Like you're not an artist at that point. You you have no contribution to the output that comes. You are simply a, a broker or um, an art purchaser or something to that effect. You are a, a middle person. You took the prompt that somebody else created with their artistic design that they had in their head and you plugged it into the an AI program and it spun out a result, you're not you're not an artist at that point. That's I disagree with that. 
Yeah, that's it's ideas are just a part of art as anything else. But my point is, is that you didn't have the idea. You bought the idea or you stole it from somebody else. That's my point. Is that in this scenario where you go to Fiverr and you say, I want to buy five AI art ideas and somebody else generates the ideas in a prompting text file and then you buy that. You did not generate anything. You added zero contribution other than to say, I'm going to pay for your promptings. Well, who's going to do that? How it's being done. There's a <laughs> when website. You, when I you can, remember, when you can put the in the prompt, the when you can put in the prompt yourself, I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't matter. People, some people lack the artistic it's ability like, to generate what they're looking for based on the prompts. From, from concept into like iteration, it, it's a, not not everybody has the ability to take what they see in their head out and yeah. nor do they have the time to devote to being right. able to get it out yeah. but I, I know i'm not uploaded any like i want to play around with them but i sure as hell don't want to give up any rights to lance otter by doing that in mid-journey you know like yeah yeah where things I mean, are just a little little hairier but i would love to i chat gbt i think could write a fun hypnosis script too yeah, um, well, it, it can. but again, I've That's been making man. it up on my own for three years. Right. Why do I need AI to do it for me? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's for me. It's it's a lot like um, I think that you can transpose a lot of the art world uh, into the different roles that people will work, will work with within AI. If um, you know, say, Josh, if I come to you and I say, "Hey, I want to," what's it called when you you I want to commission a piece? From you, and here's what I have in my head. I would like to see a, a you know, four gray rabbits uh, playing pinochle. That's that's what I'd like to see. You can either do one of two things. You can either yourself take my input and create from scratch your own, you know, pulling shapes and drawing and the whole kit and caboodle, or you could jump out to Chat GPT and say, hey, write me a prompt for AI that will generate blah, 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 and then copy that and paste it into mid-journey. And now you've got ex potentially exactly what the client is looking for. And then you just present that to them and then you tweak it however you need to tweak it. And maybe it's something where you output it, right? You output the file, you throw it into your uh, image manipulation software and you still tweak it and make it more specific to what the client is looking for. Because most likely when you put four rabbits playing pinochle there's a high likelihood that one of those rabbits is going to have more than one arm or it's going to have multiple an fingers. eyeball that's like up in its ears or something so yeah but i but i think that's where that's where it comes to be is that uh, i don't think that these ai app programs will ever truly replace um art artistry um but I do think no, that the, where the here the hysteria is, yeah, it's not the death of art, and it is right. not the death of artists either. It's just it's the difference between traditional medium and right. digital medium. That right. this argument goes on all what, the time. And the I want to give one story from my past. Yeah, go ahead. This was in art and and college, and the professor really changed me on a lot of stuff. You, it's easiest to see this discrepancy of opinion um, on modern installation art a pile of garbage sitting there in the middle of the thing or a banana tape to a to a wall right um that everyone is like i don't know if that's art i don't know if that's art but as soon as you take a frame and hold yeah. it between you and what you're looking at it's art yeah well yeah yeah and i would so 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 was it not art the whole time or did it just need to be framed in a way that you would then call uh, except that it is art so in a way it, it the ais are making art but it's still a little too steel heavy like if, well, if I mean, it was a little more creative on its own i think hell we wouldn't and, even be having this information. And, and i mean because, robots have been replacing labor for a long time and why 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 does art get to not i mean and not even well, art i mean look at like a script writer like that's, you know, yeah, or a news a very, or a news writer. Right, that news now writer. we can have, now we can have Chat GPT write the write the news. <laughs> Although there is now people developing AI detectors that mm -hmm. will tell you the how much of whatever 
you know, written form it is, is likely to be AI generated. Um, I mean, shit, like we ain't have Bud, BuzzFeed this whole time doing exactly yeah, that. It, you think yeah, that's written yeah. by humans? No. Yeah, right. I mean, I've, I've come across <laughs> quite a few articles that are, are a few years old that really read not like a human would type them. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Um, but, you know, Stefan, you make a very valid point. Um, let's let's take a uh, let's take a manufacturing job. OK, uh, assembling cars. Right. A lot of that ro- is done by robots. When that happened, the people who assembled those cards, cars had an opportunity to learn how to then manipulate the robot and repair the robot and so on and so forth so that they would still have a place in the industry. Um, so, I mean, is that a situation here? Like I said, where prompting of AI art becomes the true artistic aspect of AI art or or any AI generated item for that. Well, it's just, it, it, yeah, it's like any industry that gets changed. I mean, it's just like the coal industry. They're fighting and fighting because they're going to lose their jobs, they feel. But if we can replace it with a clean energy job, right, then it can be replaced. You know, if we can find a way to replace it. The problem is, is that where it took 100 guys to build that car and now takes two robots. Right. And so, you know, that that's where the issue lies. Like, you're not going to need five guys in a writing room to write right. Colbert's jokes when you just need one guy to write the prompts for or Chat one GPT. pandemic to turn everybody into a motherfucking artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Um, and, yeah, know, even not- even even the robots pandemic turned robots right. into artists um as soon as what's that dancing robot guy that you know that i think it's toyota i think that has the robots that have you seen that it's like a youtube video i think that they it's it's a it's an obstacle course done by a walking robot but they matched it to the music um you know the robots are, are we're all gonna we're all gonna die the robots are here i can't remember who writes the song i think it's uh, I'm going to butcher the name of the song, but um, I'll see if I can find it and plug it in here as a suggested title, if I can, because um, it's pretty, pretty funny to watch. But anyways, um, as soon as one of those robots paints a picture, I think then we're then we're all doomed. So or would it would. Well, be... No, I mean, we're doomed when they do it without being prompted. That's what I'm saying. Without being prompted. Yeah. Like you just go to the robot and say, hey, robot paint me art and then the robot paints you the most magical picture you've ever seen before in your life well you can do you can do that right now without being but i'm saying without any prompt it just wakes up and decides it wants to paint paint yeah right and that's skynet that's terminator that's how the world ends right um so here's a deep dark question do you believe that those painting elephants are artists yes I don't know enough about their biology. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you know, like there, there's always going to be somebody on the other side claiming like the they were just the animals were just taught to to apply stuff on here and there, and that it's it's a rep a pattern. But there are elephants out there that are selling their art right now to this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the on elephants behalf of the zoo. So I don't think the elephant sells their art though. I think the zoo or whatever the zoo sells their art. Well, right. they're zoo slaves so they're yeah, taking I mean, everything they're mo- it's taking really, their art think too about it they're you know they're slave yeah they're slaves right because they don't get to choose and they don't get to keep their art they just have to paint it and then the zoo or whatever sells it and it all benefits the zoo presumably benefiting the elephant as well but um yeah it's you bring up a whole cycle. other topic right where are the perks to being an elephant artist <sighs> we we gotta do better guys um, so what's well, next? Uh, the the article, or not the article, but NPR they were talking about is that music is is next. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's, there's AI music a, is next. Uh, An AI. I was looking at it the other day. Uh, I think it's done by the same people who do Chat GPT, Open AI, um, and they are developing a music writing AI program. Like they have fed it all the known music uh, to date. And they can say, type, you know, write me a piece of music that is similar to Mozart, and it will write music that is similar to Mozart. And it actually sounds really good. I've yeah. listened to a couple of the samples. 
I just know that, man, for a hot six months, it was a good time to be a college student, man. <laughs> for a hot six months before it got before the bustedness happened. But man. Well, I don't understand how, like, how does how does a program identify if something was written by AI? It's it's doing all the same research that a college student does. It's just writing it a whole lot faster. Yeah. It, is it a matter of syntax? Because if it's a matter of syntax, you could say, write this paper as if I'm a ninth grade high school student uh, in a third world country. I don't know. I mean, you know, it might write it completely different than if, you know, you could use that as a part of your prompt. I just, I think that that's the folly, right, in um, those AI detectors is that they're assuming some sort of indication, especially if you take the text, pull it out of chat GPT or whatever else, and then throw it into something else and say, okay, now take this and revise it. You know, it's like, it's like bouncing your IP off of 15 countries, you know, they can't trace you yeah. forever. So I don't know. I just, a hell of a lot of work to avoid writing a paper, Josh. It is, <laughs> but even still, let's say that, let's say all that work takes you an hour. It's a lot less time than it takes to write a paper. I mean, it, it took me about an hour. Yeah. I, from, you I think a lot of the papers. crux of it is that you, that you're assuming that the art artists won't adapt and do better. I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah. let this shit keep me on my game. Keeps uh, me I, sharp. I, I would also say that I, I, I don't see AI art, like I said, replacing any known art form. I see it becoming its own art, right? It's, you can, you could potentially go to a gallery and see a collection of all of the AI art pieces generated by a specific artist next to all of their whatever other types of pieces they already generate. You know, I think that's the, instead of railing against AI and the possibilities, the true opportunity here is to embrace it and to figure out a way to make it work for you. Well, people don't like change and progress. It scares them in general. I mean, look at politics. I'm just Fine. laughing at the thought of out of work artists. Isn't that part of it? <laughs> like, yeah. Isn't that wait, part of wait, being there's, an there's in so work. Definitely. There's in work artists. <laughs> uh, is struggling artists going to have to go away? I mean, is that what you're saying? I mean, like the whole mantra around struggling artists. I'm surprised that it hasn't been done in with tarot decks yet. Probably oh, yeah. sure. I haven't seen. Yeah. Any, I was like, but... check Etsy. I'm sure it has. There actually has. I've got a deck. Cause, uh, hold on. Cause I, that's one of the first things I did is I started creating tarot cards with mid journey. What happened to that? I, I, I it cost too much to keep. I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, well, it, the tarot deck that I have, there's, it's a high, highly unlikely that they went into whatever AI our program and said, give me uh, ace of cups because I have tried doing that. And what you end up getting is like a bunch of like AI interpreted wording, random letters. So no, like I was just telling Santosh, I created, I actually have a folder filled with a number of different ones that I had created for tarot cards. You just have to be really specific. Right. That's what I'm what saying. You want. Prompt, prompting is key. And that's what I'm, that's what I was trying to hit at earlier is that the ability to write a correct prompt will become its own art form. Unless you may get, even be a niche like um, yeah. coding, yeah. Unless you get AI to write your prompts for you, so which I've done. I've I've, I've had Chat GPT write a prompt for me to plug into Mid Journey to get what I'm looking for, and it's it's pretty good. So, um, yay AI. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm actually really excited about it because I kept I kept hearing about all the stuff that was going to come with AI. And of course, you know, everybody's scared of Terminator and all that crap and iRobot and everything. But, you know, I, so far, everything that I've seen with AI is that it's not self-aware. It still has to be told what to do. And that self-aware piece, right, is what Stefan was talking about earlier. The moment it gets to the point where it asks who am I and why am I here? 
then that brings a whole nother level of conversation around, in my opinion, what defines consciousness and could AI develop consciousness? I think it could. I think sort of that's our compulsion is to make that happen for some reason or other, why ever it yeah. was programmed in us or brought out of us. Yeah. We're obsessed with creating life. It'd all go. I mean, look at Frankenstein. I mean, that's what the yeah. whole thing is about. So, yeah, I think it's interesting to see. Um, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Same. Pretty sure it's just a new fad of a filter. <laughs> People only care because they want to look like a like an astronaut, and in, in that one series yeah. of them that went through a little while yeah. ago. Well, you know, I was I was I was watching somebody on on YouTube um, this last little closing statement, and they were talking about how um, that program Linza, right, that you can plug in, you put it, upload your picture, and it creates mm-hmm. this awesome AI art of you. Um, that's basically built on the same stuff that Midjourney is built off of. The difference is is that that app removes the need for you to prompt, right? It removes the need for you to learn how to prompt. So, um, you know, the whole idea around service delivery is finding something that people could do their themselves, but make it convenient so that they don't have to do it themselves. I'm having this uh, semi epiphany that it's sort of like also, um, do, do you design a website or did you use what was built in Canva? (laughs) <laughs> but isn't yeah. that still a website on or the other you, end of or it? Or did you use an existing template from GoDaddy or, right. or Wii download it from or Wix whatever or, else. you know, yeah. whoever, whoever, right. no sponsors yet. <laughs> it's yeah. the same thing. It's the same exact thing. And when, when we shifted from a, from a website design perspective to using more templates, what happened? Companies who created websites now create templates. And so if you don't like the out of the box templates that you get with Weebly or GoDaddy or whoever else, you can go buy your own template. So it's it's the same thing. It, it's the same thing as AI and prompting, right? So if if the need to code goes away because AI can code, you can say, I, I need JavaScript that'll do X, Y, and Z and chat GPT or some other program can throw that out quickly. So the need to code now goes away and is replaced by the understanding of how to write adequate prompts to get what you're looking for. Maybe, but there's still like the joy of baking and making artistic, uh, like food uh, stuffs. And then there's also the Kroger and the Walmart to go buy yeah. the strawberry shortcake from. Right. It's still, still a dessert, but it didn't, it, that mass marketing didn't kill yeah. off the niche of bakers that were right. ever going to exist. But there's also people that will drive from the grocery store to your house and bring you your food. So there's an opportunity. Thank the gods. Those there's people an opportunity are there. in the middle, right? <laughs> how to add service. So what did you say, Santosh? I didn't, but now I'm going to say tip your drivers. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I said thank, thank the fucking gods that those do exist, being a autoless person. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, so I, I, I think that, like I said, the opportunity here is to figure out how to make, how to take something that we've always done and make it into a service using AI as that intermediary to help really save time and effort. So, mm-hmm. but anyways, uh, I think we're good. We've rounded about 30 something minutes or so. And I think it's probably a good time for us to leave the people uh, to enjoy their astral stew. Um, Next time we get to a creepy catch up, I'm going to tell you one from months before this. Okay. Sounds good. So that's incentive for us to continue to do these and for you to continue to come watch them. Um, And uh, we'll have another one for you in about uh, a month or so. So thank you all very much for tuning in. Um, We really appreciate the, the viewership that you've given us. And this has been Josh. Keep making AI stuff. Keep keep on trucking, yo. <laughs> keep on trucking. This has been Santosh. I guess I'll just ask GPT <laughs> for my sign off. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> yeah, that that that's what killed the mood. That right there. <laughs>